it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to card number seven of the Countdown to Christmas card series. We're going to be making this card today, which is a background with a fussy cut image just glued on the front of it. The first thing that we're going to do is take a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half, or that might actually be four by five and a quarter, I can't exactly remember, but it is a little bit larger than the background stamp that we're going to use. And that stamp is from Joy Claire. It's called Christmas Lights. It's the first time that I'm using it. I'm going to load it into my Misty, use the magnets to hold the background paper down, and then we're going to ink it up with some Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink, which you'll see in a minute I get everywhere on the stamp, on my nails. It was just messy. I don't know what was going on or how I even ended up with so much ink all over the place, but this one was a little messy. Oh, I think right here I should have checked for air bubbles. I believe there were air bubbles in that background stamp because it's so large. Um, I probably should have checked for that, but it doesn't transfer over to the paper, so I'm okay. We're going to be doing some very simplistic coloring. This is going to be one of the easy cards in the series, easy to mass produce. And, you know, if you are short on time, this would be a great one for you to, to create. We're just going to stamp it a couple times until we get a great impression. And then we are going to use two colors of Copic markers. Now, normally when I'm coloring an image, I would use multiple colors, but because these lights are so tiny and because I wanted to make this go a little bit quicker, again, for mass production, I used one red Copic and one green Copic, even though you'll see I have two of each color laid out on the desk. So the first one I used was R46, and then I also used G19 for the green color. I'm just very quickly coloring in the light bulbs on all of these. I will go back with the white gel pen and add a little bit of um, highlights to each of these light bulbs. But for now, I just wanted to use the one color to color them in. So this is very, again, simplistic, very easy to do. Um, I'm trying to do a mix of quick and easy cards and then cards that are more intricate, some uh, interactive, using products that take a little bit longer to dry or multi-step. This one was pretty simplistic. You color the background, you color the stamped image, and that was pretty much it. So like I said, I'm going in there with the G, I believe that's G19, and just going in and coloring all of the light bulbs green. So I'm having a lot of fun doing this series. Uh, I tried to do something similar to it last year, but I started a little bit too late, and then we went away for my birthday, and then I also went to California the week or two after that and then there was Thanksgiving in the middle so there was a lot of stuff that happened but I am kind of on track to get my 25 Christmas cards done before Christmas. So now we are taking an image from the Kindred Stamps Merry Whatever stamp set and stamping it out with that same Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink and this is just stamped on a pound, uh, piece of 65 pound recollections cardstock. And then I'm going to move the camera down in a little bit to show you a little bit more of a close up coloring of this image. So here you go. This is a little bit closer. So this is, I believe this is G14. This is my lightest color. Yep, G14. There we go. And I'm just doing the flicking motions. Now I'm, I apologize that you can't really see the image, but you can see the Copic marker being flicked up that's how I kind of got the texture for the fur. And then I'm going to go in with, I believe this is G3. I think I used G3 or G5. I couldn't remember and it's a little fuzzy on there, but I think it is G3 to fill in some of the places where there would be a shadow. Or is that G3? I apologize. It's either three or five. There's not a big variation between those two Copic markers. So now I'm going to continue to go in with some flicking motions and get the fur on this creature colored in. And because even though he is a tiny creature as well, I wanted to give a little bit of depth and dimension to him. And then I will also color his little button nose in with R20, which is a very, very light pink. 
And again, I apologize. This is the first time I've zoomed in this close and I guess I should move my camera over a little bit so you guys can actually see the image and not just pictures of my hands because that's not what you wanted to see. So there you go, a little bit. And you can see a little bit more of how I was coloring in that image. But again, it's a very simplistic two colors, two, you know, two shades of green uh, coloring. And then I also, oh, I'm sorry, I also did put that R20 on his cheeks to give him a little bit of, um, just a little bit of cheeks there. So I fussy cut that out and then used my black marker to go around the edges of it and... Uh, to make it look more finished. And now I'm just putting the background on the piece of black cardstock that I have cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half for the card base. And I'm just taking my white gel pen to add the highlights to all of the lights. So the little creature over there was a fussy cut and then when I fussy cut I like to go around with a black marker or whatever color I stamped the image in just to give it a smoother look because I'm not great with fussy cutting and it's unusual. I've really been enjoying fussy cutting lately but it doesn't give a nice finished edge sometimes so I think that it's easier, It'll, it makes it look nicer if you go around with a black marker. Now I'm taking the MFT On Point Precision Glue and putting a little bit of glue on the back of him and covering up a spot where I had a little bit of black ink. That's why he's all the way to the very left side. And then I realized that the background looked a little bit plain. So I'm taking the heart that is included in the Kindred Stamps Merry Whatever stamp set, putting it on an acrylic block, inking it up, and then just stamping it on the back. Now if you look at the loops, they do have, um, you know, they do have loops in the lights. So I thought this would just look nice next, next to the loops um, or in addition to the loops. So I'm going to stamp them out and then I'm also going to bring in more of that R20 and color them in. I wanted to color it in red, but then I didn't want to introduce a new color red. But because we already did the pink on his cheeks and on his nose, I thought that it would look good. And that last heart, Again, when we talked about doing pattern paper, we talked about having stuff be stamped off of the edge. So that's why I stamped it off the edge. And then I put it to the side and I think you'll see me color in a minute. Now we're going to do the inside piece, which is cut down to three by five, uh, three, oh, I'm sorry, three and three quarters by five. And we are gonna stamp the Merry Whatever in the same Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. Now I'm just, line up the paper. There was a smudge on the back of it, again, because I had ink all over my hands. Now I'm just lining the paper up to make sure that it stamps pretty much in the middle of it. I just usually eyeball things. I'm not really great with measuring, so I like to eyeball, and most of the time it looks straight when it's done. So there we go. We're going to ink it up with the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink, and stamp it down and get a very nice stamped impression and I realized I missed the loop on the Y so I have to go back in and stamp it again. I don't know how I did that but somehow I missed it. So you're going to see that it stamps very nicely, the Merry Whatever. And then we're going to glue that to the inside of the card and clean off the stamp. And then we're going to bring back in the panel that I had, or the card front. And then there you go. I'm just coloring it in with the R20. Again, no shading, just coloring it in that, um, the R20 Copic color. So, And then we will glue the inside uh, piece in with the ATG. When I do a black card base, I like to have a white panel lining it inside whether I stamp a sentiment now or stamp one later I do like to have one in there because it's easier to write on you can write with a silver gel pen or a white gel pen but I like to have a piece of white cardstock so you can use whatever color you want but that's the end of the card thank you guys so much for watching if you have comments or questions please feel free to leave them below and I will see you guys again soon for another video bye